You will remember the Gowden, the Gowden, the Gowden. Never mind, I'll be right back. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You all remember the garden gown, right? This is a lovely princess dress that I made a while back. And as much as I love this, this is not something I can wear in daily life or even to most special occasions. It is just very extra, very out there. And it also has some construction issues that make it just not very wearable to me. So when I finished this dress and saw that I had actually quite a bit of fabric left, I decided that I wanted to make a garden gown pret-à-porter version, a ready-to-wear edition of this couture gown. <laughs> it is quite common for uh, large fashion houses to create their runway collections and then create ready-to-wear collections that are inspired or based off of the runway collection but much more wearable for you know the average person in daily life. My challenge for this video is to transform this into something that I can actually wear. So I basically want to capture the essence of this dress in a way that it is still socially acceptable to wear. <laughs> so that's gonna be my challenge for today. I do actually have a couple ideas of how I could make this work. I think, well, for obviously the most important part is the fabric. I'm gonna be using the exact same fabric. I have quite a bit left of all of these elements. This dress consists of three different fabrics. It has the uh, lilac satin lining, then it has a lilac tulle or a lavender colored tulle, and then the obviously top fabric with the 3D flowers, which is the most kind of recognizable part about this dress. The original garden gown has a T-length circle skirt and I think I'm gonna go a little bit shorter for my ready-to-wear version. Uh, I'm thinking knee length or just just slightly over knee length and I'm not gonna do the ruffle. The original gown has a ruffle down the bottom. Uh, as much as I love that I simply don't have enough fabric to do that again because it takes a lot of fabric to create that ruffle. Then for the top I absolutely adore this style of top with the boning and the cups and everything. It's very structured, it's absolutely gorgeous, but it is the thing about this dress that makes it most unwearable. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to change the bodice and I'm thinking I might do a similar shape, um, but obviously not bone it, not make it structured. So I'm thinking maybe a sweetheart neckline or just square like this. And I'm thinking of doing straps with my ready to wear version. This is strapless because it's held up by the boning on the bodice, of course. As with this one, I'm still undecided on whether I want to do sleeves or not. However, these sleeves are detachable, so I could just use them with my ready to wear gown as well. And by detachable, I mean they're literally separate from the dress, so I can just put them on when I'm wearing the new dress. I guess what I should do is um, find a pattern. And I was actually looking for a pattern that I could use to make my bodice with. And I realized that there is something very important that is missing from my sewing room, my sewing gear in general, which is block patterns. I would love to have just basic patterns that fit my size that I could use and then adapt into more elaborate designs. The circle skirt that fits me, the panel skirt that fits me, a bodice with darts that is exactly my size and a bodice with princess seam that is exactly my size. If I had those four, I could go all different directions. I think this, this should be a video. <laughs> I think this should be a video where we make this and I show you how to do it as I learn how to do it. For now, I'm gonna do what I have been doing for a long time and that is use this pattern, my only pattern with princess seams, this vest pattern. <laughs> I actually adapted this pattern when I made my wedding dress as well and it would be so simple to actually convert into a block pattern. Anyways, <laughs> that's that's gonna be uh, at a later point. So for now I'm just gonna go ahead and adapt this again into something that fits my vision a little bit better and then we can go ahead and get started. I, I think I should check though if I still have enough fabric to do a circle skirt because if I don't I might have to switch to a panel skirt. Um, so let me just pull out my fabric first, lay it all out and see how much I have to work with. This is exactly enough for a knee length circle skirt, which means I'm gonna have to make the bodice out of scraps, which should be fine because I'm planning on doing a fairly small bodice. So I have like, I'll have this left and a few other scraps that I saved from when I made the last project. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out my circle skirt so that I can let that hang and then I'll just work on the rest of the bodices. Yeah, let's cut out some circle skirts and I'll just have to deal with whatever fabric I have left for the rest of my dress. Let's go.
a slight change of plan in regards to the skirt. I didn't realize that the top fabric, like my floral printed fabric, is a different width than the other two. So I wasn't able to make my circle skirt the same width as the other two circle skirts, which means that the floral fabric is a little bit shorter and I think in order to fix this or kind of integrate this into the design I am gonna do a ruffle after all but I'm gonna do a ruffle of just the purple tool and I might actually even attach it to the purple tool and just make it kind of start where the floral fabric ends so that it looks like a feature but I'm gonna let them hang a little bit longer while I work on the bodice first and for that I'm gonna have to get to adapting this pattern now this shouldn't be too difficult to do I only need a couple basic adjustments so first of all this pattern comes with a button closure in the front and I want my zipper to be in the back so I'm gonna have to adjust for that. They do have a line running down the pattern that indicates the center front. So I'm just gonna fold the pattern along that and then cut it out on the fold here. And as I do that, I'm gonna make sure to change the neckline because right now this is a vest, so it comes down pretty low over the chest. Second thing I need to adjust is the waist because this is quite a bit longer than I need it to be and we're trying to save fabric here. Since these pieces are curved, you can tell pretty well where the waist sits, like right here in the narrowest part of the, the pattern. So I'm just gonna, uh, once again, fold the pattern under a little ways below that, um, and then just make sure to do it at the same height <laughs> on all of these pattern pieces. Sometimes patterns have a line running along the waist as well. That would have been very helpful. This one doesn't have that, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to um, measure that out, I think. Now, since I've taken away fabric at the front where I folded away that overlap for the buttons, I need to make sure to add that back into the back of the garment so that I leave some room to insert my zipper here. And I'd like to leave a little bit of extra room just in case this ends up not being exactly the right size. I'll have some wiggle room here. So I'm gonna leave a nice big seam allowance at the edge of the back center piece uh, where usually this would be cut on the fold. So I'm just gonna cut this out and then I'm gonna also go ahead and lower this um, neckline, I guess, in the back, like a more open shape in the back. At this point, I think I should just baste all of this together so that I can check the fit and I can then use these pattern pieces as a guide to cut out my tool and floral fabric layers. Just gonna go ahead and check what this looks like, see if I need to make any adjustments and then we can continue. Okay, it's sewn together, so let's give it a try. Oh no, I sewed the wrong shoulders together. Never mind, I'll be right back. Oh wow, <laughs> let's try that again. I have my bodice here, so let's try it on and see what it looks like just over my clothes. Just so I can see the shape a little bit. Okay, not bad. There's a lot of room here <laughs> that I can take away when I insert the zipper. And I'm definitely gonna make some changes. I'm gonna deepen this neckline. I think I would like it to come down to here. Let me actually, Put this on inside out and draw that on so that I know how to adjust this. I think something like this should be all right. That can be much lower as well. Maybe I'll go all the way to here. Just a really nice and low back. And I'm gonna try and make the straps a bit thinner. I think that will be a bit more elegant as well.
my pattern pieces are ready. I have every one cut out of all three layers of fabric. So I have the satin on the bottom, then a layer of just the lilac tulle. This right here, just plain old lilac tulle. And then of course the printed floral fabric on top. Basted, the three layers basted together. So all I have to do now is just simply assemble it like I did when I basted all of this together at first to try it on. And I just really, really hope that it looks good. <laughs> so let's pin this together and find out. I have a bodice, that's the back of it, I have a bodice <laughs> and it looks great but I just realized I completely forgot to trace my pattern pieces for a lining so now I'm debating what the best course of action would be here do I take it apart again, trace the lining and put it back together, try and trace it while it's assembled just oh I don't know what to do, I really don't want to take this apart again <laughs> This fabric doesn't take very well to being handled like that. I do think I still have enough of that lilac linen that I used in my um, garden gown as well, the couture version. So I'm probably just gonna go ahead and grab that and use that for the lining in this as well. I do really need lining though, because it looks like this from the inside it frays a lot and it's scratchy and just uncomfortable. And I will need something to hide the waistband of the skirt in as well. So I do need lining. I tried to copy this in the assembled state, but I can't do it. It's just too curvy. So I compromised by taking apart half of it. So yeah, less work. <laughs> So I'm just gonna go ahead, copy these pieces onto the linen, assemble the lining as well, and then I can attach the lining and the actual bodice together and we can finally continue. Okay, the bodice is lined and looking good from both the inside and the outside. So back to the skirts. The outer layer, for some reason, I cut that on the wrong side of the fabric. So floral fabric is two half skirts now, so I have to attach those to each other. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and make a ruffle out of this lilac tulle to attach to either this one or the actual lilac tulle itself. And in the last video, I complained about having to hem all of this and how difficult this fabric was to work with. And a bunch of you guys suggested that I just uh, melt the fibers. So I'm gonna try that in way of hemming this skirt. I'll just go ahead and run the edge through a flame and see if that seals the edges. Cause if that works, that would save me a lot of time. So, all right, let's sew it up first and then give that a try. I have a lovely scented candle here. Might as well make it a pleasant experience. So let me try it with a scrap first. 
<laughs> so that I don't burn off my actual skirt if I don't need to. Okay, okay, that is really easy. And whoa, never mind. <laughs> okay, I do have to be careful. If I hold it near, it melts. If I hold it in it, it burns. It's kind of hard to know the difference between not doing enough and doing too much. Like, where's that line? <laughs> but I think, I think we're good. I think I'm doing well. So I think it's gonna take a long time if I do the entire hem. I'm gonna do it, and then all I can do is hope that this actually stops it fraying. But I think it should, I'm, I'm hopeful so far, it looks good. I will come back once I've done everything. I did the whole melty thing. I think it worked for the most part. I did end up with a hem that has a couple of um, bites taken out of it <laughs> by the flames, but I think I think it's fine. You won't, probably won't see that in the end result. I did it to my underskirt as well, which saved me a lot of time on hemming. But yeah, time to work on my ruffle here. So what I need to do is figure out how big the difference is or how wide the difference is between the length of my tool skirt and the length of my overskirt so that I know how wide to make my ruffle. Because like with the original garden gown, I want my ruffle to be, you know, the, 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 just, just the bottom part. 59, 48. Okay, so 10 centimeters, 47, maybe 11, 11, 12 centimeters, I think would be fine. The tool layer is ruffled. Gosh, I really do hate doing that, but it looks so good. Next up, I'm think, yeah, probably just gonna go ahead and layer these skirts on top of each other, base them together, and then I can go ahead and finally finish this dress, attach the skirt to the bodice, sew up the lining and insert a zipper, and then it's gonna be done. It's taking way longer than I expected again, and I'm a little bit worried if I'm gonna be able to get this video up in time. I also just really hope it looks good because I haven't actually seen this yet all layered on top so far so good last layer i think it's gonna be nice let's baste it The pret a porter version of the garden gown is finished. I definitely have some thoughts about this one. First off, I really like the concept. I think it is pretty obvious that this is like a more toned down casual version of this gown right here. Why is this sleeve on upside down? I just noticed that. It has been the whole video. I think the concept is really cute. I am quite happy with my design. However, and here we go. Either this fabric is cursed or maybe I'm the problem and probably the second, a li little bit of both, but probably more of the second. Like it's more elaborate counterpart. This dress is unfortunately, as hard as I tried, sloppily made. I think I need to accept that I just can't make a dress in a week, film the whole thing and upload a video in a span of four days, like from Monday till Friday, because this video needs to go up in an hour. I should upload this video in an hour and I'm standing here <laughs> still filming my outro. This isn't the first time this has happened. I need to accept that I just can't do a one week video when I'm sewing something, because that means I have to rush things. I don't know where I can cut corners yet in sewing and often you can't cut corners in sewing and when I do try to cut corners it doesn't turn out well. Unfortunately this dress it's just not that great. It's not that great. I really 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 should have done a mock-up of this bodice but I just really didn't have the time. The fit isn't great. There is a lot of room here underneath my arms for some reason that isn't very simple to take out. This just does things to the fit that aren't very nice. The waist is too short like the bodice is too short my waist is a little bit lower 
than where it sits right now, which makes it look out of proportion. I'm not a huge fan of the length of the skirt, but I think that is mostly just in combination with the short bodice, makes it look kind of juvenile. I also think that the purple linen, even though I love reusing fabrics like this, it's just not very suitable as a lining fabric because it's just too thick and bulky and it adds a lot of bulk to this garment, which is already made up of so many layers. So I think I should have picked a different fabric for that. I also wish I had thought about how low I made the back in the back because it is just at the level where I can't really wear a bra with it, but I do kind of need to wear a bra with it to fill out all of this extra space that I have around here. Just, oh, it, it's just not a great design. It's not a great design. And I had no idea throughout the entire time since a garment that closes in the back with a zipper, I really struggled with trying that on as I'm sewing because I don't really know how to hold it closed in a way that will mimic how it actually closes with the zipper on. Basically what it all comes down to, I should have taken more time with this, but then a simple project like this, I don't really want to make it a several part video because I feel like it's just not interesting enough for that. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm basically just kind of really struggling at the moment with how I want to incorporate my sewing into my content. <laughs> I'm always very conflicted when I share things like this because I don't know, part of me wants to just show the dress from all the right angles, pretend that it's all fine, but then I can't, I just, I'm not a very good liar, I can't do that. <laughs> I am much more honest than would be good for me as a content creator online, but then I feel so bad presenting work to you guys that I know is not my best because I just, I feel guilty about that and I, I know I should have done better because I made the exact same mistakes in, in that dress. <laughs> Although I really like the uh, melting of the hem on this, that, that worked great. So thank you guys for that tip. I'm gonna take it as a lesson for next time. I need to change my ways when it comes to sewing and just simply take more time and maybe do a simpler video in between when I'm sewing. I'll have a think about it, but for now, yeah. It's not the worst, but it's definitely not my best work. If there's anything you take from this video, Make a mock-up when you're making your own pattern or at least try the garments on excessively <laughs> several times throughout the process. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm gonna quickly go ahead and edit this video. I will see you later today in the comment section and then very soon after that in my next video. Thank you for watching once again. And yeah, have a lovely weekend, guys. Bye.